Hello, in this video we're going to continue working on our grid component and in this particular video I'm going to lay out the squares in a grid. So they're not going to be changing colour or anything just yet when we click on them but we're going to just lay them out so we can see where they all should be. So I'm going to follow probably four steps here. The first step is calculate uh, the width and height of the grid. So how many squares across and how many squares down. Then the second step is calculate space left over because from that we can calculate the margins. So calculate the margins and finally we can actually draw squares and the background. So let's follow these four steps. So to calculate the width and height of the grid, that's it's pretty straightforward. We first need the available width and height that we can actually draw in. So I can say here, int width equals get width, just using the get width method of the panel, and int height equals get height. And this is gonna give us a width and height of the interior of the panel, hopefully in pixels. Now from that we can pretty easily calculate what I'll call the grid width and grid, th grid height, which is the number of cells across and the number of cells down. And actually for reasons that will become clear later on, I'm gonna make these member variables. So let's say private int grid width, and we'll have a private int grid height, actually just to be consistent, Let's capitalize width and height here. And we're also going to have at the top here a int left margin and a int right, um, top margin. We're not going to need the right and bottom margins. We're just going to need the ones at the top and left. So we've got the width and the height now. Let's calculate how many cells actually fit into this space. So we can say grid width equals width divided by cell size. I'm actually not going to use all of the grid width that I actually could use. So I'm going to just put this in brackets and then subtract one from it. So we'll use one less uh, cell horizontally than we absolutely need to use because that will ensure we've always got some space for the margin which makes our calculations a bit easier. Let's just duplicate that and then we're going to have a grid height. That's the height divided by cell size minus one. Now the space left over is now pretty easy to calculate. Let's have int x spare. So the horizontal space that's left over is going to be the grid width times the cell size. And we've just got to take that. So that's the space we're actually using. So let's just say width minus that, and that will give us how much space horizontally we have left over for a margin. And if we double that, and we say here, let's call it y spur, that's going to be height minus grid height. So grid height will be the number of cells down times cell size. Then we've got those. It's pretty easy to calculate the margins. So let's say left margin equals, and I'm just going to use the default form division that um, doesn't give us a floating point number. So we're just going to say left margin, like integer division is the expression I was looking for. That's going to be x spur divided by 2, because of course we've got a right margin as well. Similarly, top margin that's going to be y spur divided by 2. Now finally, I think we're in a position to actually draw the squares and the background on our panel. Let's say g2.setColor. At the moment, I just want to set some color that we can actually see. Let's maybe say, well, actually, what color did I make the background? That's actually black. We could leave it at black, or you could turn it to maybe gray. Dot darker. I think that looks quite nice 
in this context. So let's say that we set the color to color dot blue or anything that we can clearly see really just while we're working on this. Then we'll do G2 dot fill rect. And now this is the actual background rectangle. So it's actually going to form the grid lines because we're going to be able to see this rectangle behind the squares after we draw the individual square cells. So you'll see how that, this looks very shortly. So this is going to start at the left margin and the top margin for the Y offset. And how wide should they actually be? Well, it's basically going to be width minus X spur, although we might adjust that a little bit later on, and then height minus Y spur. I really wish I could just use one type of keyboard that doesn't have keys in different places all the time, but I move about too much to do that. Okay, now let's let's try this. Let's look at this, see how it looks. Okay, so here's that random rectangle that we sort of drew um, in the last video. We can actually get rid of that. We're going to um, draw these squares on now properly. So that's the kind of area where we're going to be drawing our uh, cells or squares. And this is kind of the margin around the edge that we're not going to use. So now what we want is a double loop. So for a nested loop, for int grid y, let's call it, equals zero. And this, this is going to be, these are going to be not strictly speaking coordinates, they're going to be the positions of cells. You could do this in any one of several different ways. I just kind of found this to be the easiest and the one that makes the most sense to me. Grid y, we're going to keep going while it's less than grid height. And then grid y plus plus. And let's put the brackets in there. And then we can just copy that, paste copy inside and change it. So we've got grid x, that's grid x, this is grid x, and this is now grid width. Now we've just got to draw some rectangles. So let's actually set the color at the top. What color are we going to make the rectangles? We're going to be deciding that later on, but for the moment we can just make them any old color that as long as we can see it. So let's say g2.setColor. Having already drawn the background now, let's say color.black. And this, this kind of algorithm applies whatever language you're using, really. It would make sense in lots of different languages, and I've used it in many different computer languages. So for each particular cell, let's calculate the actual X and Y coordinates for it. That's going to be simply, so we've got an X equals grid X um, multiplied by cell size. And we mustn't forget about the uh, left margin. I had to think there for a second. And then we've got a similar thing for y. So we've got y. Now we've got the grid y position of the cell times the cell size. And we've got to add on the top margin. Remember, y numbers down from the top, zero at the top, down to the bottom. And now we can actually draw our cell. So g2 dot draw uh, fill rect, fill rect and x, y, and the width and height are both the cell size. And I think now, hopefully, we're almost there, unless I've messed something up. Let's take a look at this. So if I run this, we get, it looks completely black at the moment. And the reason for that is I've just filled the entire space with black squares, so you can't see any of the background behind them. It is filled with squares, but what's the use? If you can't see them. So here when I draw the cells I'm going to subtract one from each of these so we've got a little bit of a border around each cell and now you can see a grid. Now if you look closely I don't think this goes all the way around. Let me just try the zoom 
on this. I don't know if this is going to work with my screen recorder. Mind you, it used to. So at the top here, I don't think we've got any kind of um, line, but we have got one on the we've got one on the right hand side, and we've got one on the bottom. The problem is the left and the top. And what we can do to fix that is when we draw this rectangle, we've just got to adjust this a little bit. So what about if we start filling this rect? We could try we could try subtracting one from the left and top margin, but then it might make the left and right margins and the top and bottom margins a little bit too uneven. So it's maybe better if we indent these rectangles for a start, and that's going to give us a left and top margin, but now we won't be able to see the bottom and right margins. And to fix that, we can simply make the background rectangle that we originally drew here, we can make that just a little bit bigger. So let's add on, let's add on here one, and we'll add on one as well here to the height. And then if we run that, we've got our squares beautifully laid out. I think that looks really, really nice. So the next thing that we probably want to do here is make it so that we have different states. Each cell can have its own state. And, and then we can use it in an application in the way that when we click one of these, it may, it may respond in some way which will cause it to change to a different state. And we want to have as many different possible states as the application necessitates, whatever the application actually is. But we're going to start looking at that in the next video. Don't forget, I've got a course on Swing that takes you from the right, right from the basics all the way through to advanced stuff. That's my Java Swing from beginner to expert course. And you can actually get access to all of my courses from with this ultimate subscription with only a little over $20 a month if you're interested. But anyway, you can check that out for yourself if you want to. It's on caveofprogramming.com. Okay, so until next time. Happy coding.